Good afternoon, welcome. My name is Michael Michelle, Queens Republican, President for the 2015 year. I'm starting from my left. Can you introduce yourself? Michael Rodino, the Commissioner of the Boston. Frederick Humane, Manhattan, Republican. Alan Shook, Manhattan, John Plateau, Kings County, Democrat. Bianca Perez, Bronx Democrat. Michael Wine, Executive Director. Tom Sandel, Deputy Executive Director. Pamela Perkins, Administrative Manager, Georgia Cotamanes Operations Manager. Rafael Sino, Deputy General Counsel. Steve, Rich oh. Steve Richmond, General Counsel. Steve Hankberg, Counsel for Commissioners. And Kenneth Nolan, Counsel for Commissioners. Nina M. Crispino, Director of Personnel. Okay, yes. starting with the agenda, the minutes of uh, 22415. Has everybody read them? Have a motion? I move adoption of the minutes. I abstain. Any abstain? Okay. So was it there? I second the motion. Yes. Six. Okay, it passes. Okay, Michael Ryan. Yes. Oh, is there anything added to the agenda? We have an executive session. I know Queens, that, and Manhattan. Anything else added? We uh, committee report, outreach committee report. Okay. Michael Ryan. Yes, the uh, item 2A, is the 100th Annual Election Commissioners Association Summer Conference is being held this year in Cooperstown, New York. Uh, from May 26th uh, through May 29th, uh, we're asking for the uh, general approval from the commissioners for appropriate staff uh, to attend, as well as any commissioners who may be interested in attending. So moved, Mr. Chair. Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor? All again? Um, item 2B, uh, I should have put on the agenda for last uh, meeting. I attended the uh, ESNS National Advisory Board uh, meeting from uh, February 18, uh, 2015 through February 20, 2015. Uh, basically, the, these meetings, uh, and we don't have to go into great detail, but these meetings are designed to create a roundtable opportunity for uh, various users throughout the country uh, to discuss a, either any issues that we might have uh, with, with respect to the operation of elections and also to give ESNS an opportunity uh, to uh, discuss uh, its vision uh, for moving forward. Uh, essentially, although uh, it, it's showing that it was a, a three-day trip, it really essentially turns into, these things turn into a one-day trip which is uh, you know, a check-in day the day before, and then an all-day conference, and then a travel day the following day. Um, uh, I find it informative and helpful in that uh, it, it does allow us to, to the understanding that everybody's kind of in the same boat with respect to these uh, election systems, and that uh, the problems that we uh, may encounter, or even the good things that we encounter in New York, while uh, greater in aggregate number are not uh, so much different from, from the other jurisdictions. Uh, so uh, we have kind of a, a full agenda today and we have some other things that we need to discuss in election in, uh, executive. So I'd like to move on uh, to item C unless anyone has any questions with respect to that. <laughs> C. Um, we have our State Information and Educational Day set up for uh, March 24, 2015, uh, in Albany with the chairs of both uh, the Senate and Election, uh, Senate Election Committee and, this, and the Assembly Election Committee uh, agreeing to be co-sponsors uh, in a uh, collaborative, uh, bipartisan fashion that allows us to 
um, present our legislative agenda uh, that had been previously circulated uh, to the commissioners. Uh, there are n not really uh, too many uh, changes that we were looking to make, although uh, th there is one particular uh, item, uh, and Mr. Uh, Richmond or Mr. Savino refresh my recollection with respect to the others, there is one particular item uh, that we would like to discuss uh, that, is, that is a bit of a change. Last year in our budgetary testimony with the City Council, we put uh, forward a request of the City Council and then subsequently uh, obviously the Mayor to raise the poll worker salary from $200 to $300 and the coordinators uh, from $300 to $400. Uh, that was not uh, something that carried through the budget process and so we find ourselves here today in the same spot that we were in uh, last year. The state law as it stands right now uh, calls for a, a salary of $130 for poll workers. That was amended, uh, I believe, in 2000, uh, 1997. Uh, that was amended to $200. No, the exact, it was amended, Mr. Ryan, 1997 went from 100 to 130 Okay. And by executive order from Mayor Giuliani, it went from 130 to okay. 200 in 2001. Right, so I was right. So it's yeah. 130 by state law to 200 by executive order in 2001. And then it's 200 for coordinators by state law that went to 300 by executive order in 2001. Um, as the state uh, legislature has weighed in on this, uh, we certainly don't have to wait for an executive order. We could petition uh, the state legislature to make that change, in which case if the state legislature made the legislative change, then the municipality would have to follow suit. Uh, so uh, the suggestion is being made by uh, executive management uh, to include that in our legislative package, petitioning the legislature to change uh, the poll worker salary from 200 to 300, and actually in state law from 130 to 300, and the um, coordinator salary from 200 to 400, with the acknowledgement that we're already at different levels by executive order. And if that's something that ultimately uh, is uh, approved by six votes, that's something that we would uh, we would include, and if not, then obviously it's going to be. Why only 100 more? I feel uh, the, the coordinators have a lot more Certainly, the, the petition could be made at any level that the, the body of commissioners feels comfortable. We were, uh, this was an, an attempt on the, the part of, uh, you know, the collective part of not only executive management but staff to recognize the, the problem of undercompensation and, and take, a, a, take a, a try at, at advancing the, the, the argument. If, if the commissioners have a collective opinion that we didn't go far enough, uh, certainly, we would agree, uh, but we would. <laughs> uh, but we were trying to, you know, just take an approach that we thought was, uh, you know, was passable. was passable. Yeah, just a question. Well, I I would not support this. I was just wondering what the projected extra cost would be for this increase, based on. Uh, Last, say the last elections, uh, uh, sort of payroll. How much extra is this going to cost? Because we're going to have to include that in whatever legislative submission we're going to have. And I would just like to note for the record, I haven't seen the new legislative package because the email hasn't been working, and I haven't been getting anything. And any emails that I've been sending haven't been sent out, so I haven't seen it at all. I'm also on the committee, theoretically, and was planning on going up, but I haven't seen whatever else is on there. Right. Well, essentially, first of all, to answer your first question first, and your second question second. First question, $3.5 per citywide election event. How much? $3.5 million per citywide election event. So that's what it would cost, or that's the increase? That would be the increase. Well, how many coordinators do we have? 2,400, approximately. 
and we went off a multiplier of, was it 31 or 32,000? 32,000 pole workers? 30? 32,000 pole workers. Now, keep in mind that we go off that multiplier because that's the number of, you know, essentially people that get invited to the party. Uh, but, uh, you know, not everybody shows up when invited, so it's typically less. But to set the standard at where it could be, if every, you know, with 100% attendance, it would be in that range. So, you know, at, you figure for every hundred dollars you, you raise it, two point four million. It's a, no, it's another three point five million dollars. Uh, you know, if you oh, if, oh, you, if, if, you, if you included the entire class of folks, it, it starts to add up to quite a bit of money after a while. So, uh, you know, but. Again, it's, it has been a position of prior compositions of the board uh, to advocate for the, uh, the, you know, for the raise. Uh, but again, every day is a new day. So you know, a new vote of six is, I think, going to be required to continue to advance that position. So let me also, also that's per election. So if we have a primary and a general election, it's seven so. million dollars. And if we have two primaries. Or three primaries next year, then we're talking about plus in general, it's uh, fourteen million dollars extra. I'm just, I'm just no, the, the, people to understand. The, the, the math is 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 pretty predictable once you know you start to do it. Uh, the other thing is that doesn't account for you know we we happen to be having a special in the 11th and the and the 43rd the 11th Congressional and the 43rd Assembly, it applies to a smaller uh, scale, but certainly applicable to the uh, special elections as well. So every election event that we would be putting on, if you did the math the way that we're <coughs> suggesting, it's take the number of staff and times that by $100, and that's your additional cost. Let me ask you, it says here, it says not less than 300 they can't be yeah. because they already yeah. get 300 on the executive order. Commissioner, the language is that that sets the statutory floor. The mayor would always be able to <coughs> raise it. So if the point was, I think, is to get it to what we thought in the past has been the policy of the board, which would have been the, the right level. And as the 130 in 2001, the mayor was convinced at that point to raise it by $100 each. It would hopefully, as inflation and everything else, you would be able to persuade City Hall to adjust it accordingly. So people are doing approximately 16 to 18 hours a day. I don't know what that comes to per hour. My math is not that good. Because I know the mayor is asking for, for a $15 an hour minimum wage for other people. Is that at least $15 an hour? 13 now, they changed it. It went down to it 15. Went down. It went down. 13. They started at 15. It's it's down down it's eleven uh, over a little over eleven dollars an hour if it's eighteen hours. With the increase yeah. or without the increase? Without at the current rate. No, so it's eleven a, a sixteen hour day would put you at two hundred and forty dollars. At fifteen dollars an hour. Sixteen hours and fifteen dollars an hour is two hundred and forty. We could make it 260, so we could add 65% for the whole lot of it, and then 400, so it's the same ratio since 130 is 65% of 200. And if you do 3 and 4 fifth, you can do 4 and 260. Keep that at 65%. This this may seem arbitrary, but it seems to me that we ought to do three hundred and four hundred because it's simpler. And if you're gonna start telling people two sixty, everybody's gonna forget is it 250, 240, 270, and it's just easier three hundred and four hundred and and I, I don't think anybody who would be working as a coordinator wouldn't do the job if, if, but for the fact that they were going to get four and a quarter or four fifty rather than four hundred. It still separates the uh, by twenty-five or I guess thirty percent more 
so that it shows that they have a lot more work to do, and it's just easier, and I think it's an easier sell to legislators, because again, you don't want them to have to do too much thinking in, in terms of this. So I just think simplicity, and I think it's a good cause for everybody along the way. That's, that's my view. If we did the right thing, we would reduce taxes too, but we can't get that far. Well, and, and I'm, I'm glad actually that Ms. Sandow brought that up because last year there was quite a bit of a colloquy that went back and forth uh, between um, myself uh, and the City Council, not in the open hearing, but just in the conversations leading up to the hearing. And there was a gentleman that was working for them at the time that couldn't believe that the Internal Revenue Service was requiring us uh, to withhold taxes from all the poll workers and that we actually had to set up a payroll. So I suggested to the gentleman that perhaps uh, if my position was wrong, he might do the research on his own and you know, correct the error of my ways because if we could simply do a 1099, that would be an easy thing to accomplish. We went to, we went to with the court council. Right. Well, no, but the point was, um, I did ultimately get an email back saying, that, uh, by the way, you were right. Uh, so we do have to withhold taxes. That's well settled. There's not, there's not an issue associated with that. Uh, you know, it does create quite a bit of uh, extra work for us, but it's required by the IRS and we have to do it. So whatever number is set, ultimately, Taxes are taken out as well, so what people are netting um, is 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 not that that full amount. So when we say somebody's making four hundred dollars or three hundred dollars, they're not making that. They're, they're making that less their tax burden. That's. I mean, that would just be another reason why we should be increasing it, just to cover, so that they. So it's not a loss, a net loss for them. That at least there's a net gain as a result of this. Yes. So I would move that we include in the legislative package that we seek to have the salaries increased uh, to 300 for poll workers and 400 for uh, uh, coordinators. Second. All in favor? All against? Now, now Commissioner Humane, to, an to answer your second question, the remainder of the legislative package uh, is what we submitted last year. So it was, or you know, there wasn't uh, wholesale changes made to it. So while I apologize that you, 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 uh, you didn't get the, the most recent version, all it's going to say is 2015 instead of 2014 until we include uh, this, this one item. Okay, because there was some also some discussion, I think, about changing the order of yes. the submissions. And right. I, I, I was to try and do it a little bit more uh, strategically. Right. Well, I was going the next question that I was going to ask Sorry, was would, would it be okay if we did not change the content of of the uh, of the uh, items that we're requesting but just simply put them in a, in, a, in a different order one of the things that we'd like to do and it really is the only one that, that that's kind of chomping at the bit here is to move the um, the closing of the schools for primary day up into position number one and make that our first proposal, and then the rest of them could basically stay, uh, you know, maybe, or perhaps it's just the issue we move with this that in, We were told right. that that's never happening unless you get the school, the Board of Ed, to approve that. Right. There's no way that that's happening. So I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't look to push that unless we could somehow get the schools in, because that, that's something that's been in the package for the last 19 years or so, right. and it's never gotten anywhere because the schools have, uh, they, have they, they put the kibosh on it, that's a well, they, fancy legal term, by the way, <laughs> and, uh, and, and we were told that, that, that it, it ain't happening, in quotes, it ain't happening. Right, right. so, would this, one of the, I'm sorry, would the suggestion then be to, to have the poll worker uh, pay raise be number one and leave everything else just the way it is and just drop it one one back. I mean, look, the bottom line is the legislature is getting the whole package. If somebody's interested in one of the, you know one of the issues, they'll pick, uh, they'll pick it up and you know perhaps uh, tuck it under their arm and run with it. Uh, hopefully not fall fall what they're doing. What we had been hoping to do is to have some legislation regarding the form of the ballot and whatnot. Uh, 
about twelve. And it would seem to me that that's something that is probably readily achievable right. if we're able to do a good enough job with it. And uh, and and that might be something that we would priority. After last year, we tried to deal with the Fox Bell, which went nowhere which was number one. If you look at the order, you hope from two on, that first group was improving the design of the ballot. Yeah. So that's, I mean, so to me, that would be the thing that we would try and lead with. But again, I'm only one of 10, but it seems to me that uh, we have had pretty much bipartisan unanimity on the fact that the print is, uh, can, is too damn small and that we can make various improvements to the ballot We've had uh, uh, one or two assemblymen have been very active in this, and we've had a number of attempts at trying to do this. This would be a good year to do it, uh, although it's not their year, but still it would be a good year to do it uh, because there's not a whole lot of stuff other than the budget floating around Albany these days. So I would think that we would have a halfway decent shot of pushing that through, particularly if we could get the governor's sign off on it, uh, because all of that just helps. And um, so I would recommend leading off with that. If you think, and, and I have a very small legislative uh, group that I consult with, having uh, no members of my party <laughs> elected in Manhattan. So the, the, the number of people that I have an opportunity to speak to is rather small. However, I'm just going with some common sense on this, but if you guys have a feeling from some of the contacts that you might have that I'm wrong on this, I'm certainly willing to listen and to sort of be quiet about it. Um, I mean, the idea of going up there is to try and get things done. And I wouldn't lead with the stretches, I would lead with what we could do, and then, you know, try and get them in the mood with some of the stretches. And, um, that's, that's just my view on it. Also, just on the school, you know, next year the public schools are going to have another additional day off in September, so it's going to be very hard to add another day. And, and now there's September. talk about uh, lunar, lunar, New Year, two right. as being and another then, day. You know, I'm fact, just saying, I, I think right. that that's a very heavy lift, and particularly yes. without the consent of the schools. But I, hmm? I understand the importance of it. Right. I'm not meaning to denigrate it. I'm just looking, trying to put a practical approach to this. Well, I, I think, you know, from the chair that I that I sit in, and, and, and I'm not saying that the, uh, uh, I don't mean to, to suggest for one second that the commissioners don't share uh, the, the weight of that burden, and certainly we're all, we're all a team when it comes to that. Um, the security issue, I think, is evolving before our eyes on, on election days. And and when, when you think about what it would take and some of the suggestions that have been made to me, quite frankly, you know, by, by some legislators, well, why can't we um, add a, another police officer, uh, you know, to the schools on election day to make sure that the schools are more secure? Well, putting on my old uh, criminal justice coordinator hat, okay, we add another police officer. Fine, now we've just reduced patrol strength throughout the city by 1,241 police officers. And, and when, when the police department is already hard-pressed to do the work of the counterterrorism uh, stuff, you know, the serious issues that we haven't had to deal with, uh, but now that's the new reality. It's what, that wasn't an issue 20 years ago uh, to the extent that it is now. Um, and they're already operating at seven to 8,000 police officers, less than the, what they were operating when I was uh, in the mayor's office in 1996. So we're trying to balance all of those things, and, and I just, I, I think the collective voice, whether it be publicly collective or privately collective, <clears throat> needs to start to recognize, you know, those, those security issues. Because we, we got, if you're a parent of a child in a public school and your kid forgets their lunch, you got to go in there and you got to jump through hoops to get in to bring them a peanut butter sandwich and an apple. But yet on election day, because we have to protect the, con the constitutional rights of the voters, people are walking in and out of schools all day long with nobody knowing 
who they are, not allowed to know who they are, and then who's to say? In some school buildings, I've been to a lot of them. We've all been to them. You walk right in, you go to the gymnasium, you walk right out. But some buildings aren't like that, and you have to get into the, into the depths of the building to be there. And so from a security of the children's issue, not that any vote is going to do anything, no, but somebody with nefarious intent could mix in with the voters on election day, particularly on the uh, heavily attended events, and, and end up doing something that they, that we would all be horrified if, if it happened. So I think that's kind of where I at least personally, you know, as a, as a father of school-aged children and, 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 and as the executive director, that's kind of where, where I land with it. And, and I think if it's, if we don't, my simple point is if we don't make the case more strongly than it's been made in the past, it's not gonna. It's not gonna change. But again, I, I right. take no, it. But I also believe you have to change the federal law, right? Because there is a federal guideline where the state and city receives money from the federal government for the children in school. So you got to weigh out that, and you're going. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, is no, it's I understand that I'm in the school competing, business. It's competing. You're competing against, against yeah, no, I, federal I government it. dollars. You're competing against a lot of stuff. So okay. It's going to be very hard. Well, the UFT will take any day off. <laughs> as long as they get paid, no, they'll, no, no. They, but, but this is a regular day that they're getting anyway. Is what we're saying is this is a to, to make it professional a professional day. Yeah, professional. Right, so but you would have to move a professional day away because there's only so many in the contract. So you would have to move a professional right. day away sure. and get, have a school day. So you, you, you know, and they have to have a hundred. I think it's 168. Oh no, it's 100, 180 school days, 167 teaching days, five professional days. There's a whole guideline. And right now, the mayor just added two days to the calendar. Now, one is for sometimes in the summer, so it affects summer school kids because they also get paid in the summertime from the federal government. So it's, uh, you know, I mean, I understand it. I think it's a battle that is going, going to be very hard to do. I think we should raise it anyway. Yes, I'm not saying raising it, but, you know. Accessibility, too. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's the, there's the accessibility issues as well, which some of which would be ameliorated if we didn't have students uh, in, in the building, because of those accessibility issues that we confront when we're, we're not supposed to be, when we're kind of squished into a room that we don't belong into, you know, by a principal, there would be less of a necessity to do that if the children weren't in the building. I mean, what I, right. what I, 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 I also it. say is that, you know, being on the ballot committee and in the last year and a half, what was the one of the things was, was the ballot, you couldn't read it, you know. Right. The, yeah. We've been fighting with the ballot, the size, even now. And because we're all dictated by, in a way, Queens, because we have five languages. So, we I, I apologize. I didn't mean to say that I was... I just was pointing out the security issues with respect to the school access. I wasn't trying to dovetail that into the order of, uh, of importance of, of how we listed in our legislative package. What we, what we found historically, and I, have, I apologize to everybody for keeping to remind people, but that what we can really go up there and emphasize a few things and hope to get those passed. There are 23 Three proposals on here. And I would say the chance of getting all 23 through are not so great. Right. So the most success that we've had is to concentrate on a few different areas and to push those and to try and make them see the light. And we have, I guess, four real opportunities to do that in the meeting with the uh, different chairs, in the meeting with the governor's representative, and in the luncheon that we have. And particularly, somebody usually makes a presentation at the luncheon, because if you've ever been to Albany for one of these things, everybody likes a free meal. So we get a lot of people that are coming to our luncheon. And um, they also seem to have a very limited uh, attention span. So the trick is to hit them with the most important things, press them, and it's a little bit what lawyers know. Uh, if you have a judge trial, you have to keep saying the thing over and over and over so the judge gets it. If it's a jury trial, you only have to say it once, because the jurors are interested, they're going to listen. 
the legislators, and I apologize to them in advance if anybody's listening to this, but uh, you really, they, they, you have to hit them hard with a few things, and that's what you're going to get through. And um, I would go for the things that we have a good shot with, and we could certainly include it, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't lead off with that. I okay. would, I would include it. I would try and, and, and mention it and go through some of the things, but again, we're dealing with a somewhat limited attention span. I'd have to agree with the commission. I mean, I, I've done lobbying for years, and the first thing they tell you is never bring in two or three more items because you're going to lose them. Definitely going to lose them. There are people here on both have been on both sides of the table, so I think they can all vouch for that. You go in with too many items, you can forget about it. They're not going to. They turn you off, and yet they're not even going to listen. So we really should have. Our priorities are top two or three. So priorities. one of our items is the pay raise. So what are our, uh, what's the rest of our short list of our, the other two or three design or four things? The ballot design. The ballot, ballot design. design. That's two. That's number two. <coughs> well, two I items. Think. One, two, oh, okay. two, one. I think they're talking about the order of it. Right. Priority. Yes, that's right. what we're talking about. We're going to push the top of the list. I'm just trying to get clear here. Where, uh, I, I think we should be moving towards some consensus. What, what is the top right. of the list? What I'm what I'm hearing top here, three at least, four or five things. is and, and and at least it hasn't been objected to. <coughs> uh, what I'm hearing is that we should lead with the ballot uh, proposal. That'd be number one, and number two would be the. And we presented. Right. There's six bills here, but I would present right. it as one. We need right. as one item. We need the help on the ballot. Right. And everybody's complaining about it. And even if for those people who read the newspapers, that's what the editorial pages are right. saying. And we all agree, and we can't do anything about it without your help. Right. So we have a whole we have a whole list of things to make it more readable and easier for seniors and, and for everybody to vote. And that's why that's important. Right. And you don't go, well, we need to do we need a black line here, too much detail. But but we need the ballot initiatives. And that's right. Gotcha. So what I'm hearing is there seems to be some consensus, and obviously go to a vote, that we leave with the ballot issue, and then we do uh, the second, would we do the poll worker pay raise, and then what I would simply uh, say to do is then just move everything else that was already in the book back to, uh, you know, uh, back to uh, places. So whatever's number one will become number three, and then we'll just uh, juggle it so that those things are, are all in the remaining order. Now, the one just, thing I, just I would add... Just one question before yep. you keep going. I'm looking at Proposal 14.8, which is the NYPD officers to process the PMDs. Do we need that as part? Is that something no. that we need to do now? Not, not anymore. As a matter yeah, of fact, we should. You're right. 14.8, we should take that out. I'm just. I'm yes. Out. No, you're right. 14.8, we should take out. So eliminate 14.8. Rem, rem, relieve. Move everything back. Uh, a, a couple of places and, and reorder it, but certainly the, the, the clearly from our stated intent, the, the ballot initiative would be the main priority, and then the poll worker pay raise, and then everything else will fall into place. Now, the one thing I would supplement uh, with uh, Commissioner Shulkin said, part of this process as well is to be on record with certain things. So, yes, I think we need to have our strategy about what we want to talk about going in, uh, but I also think that there are certain things that we just need to keep, you know, I'm not, on yeah, paper. I, I, right? I don't just think to, we're right. saying not to include right. them in the yep. thing. But, but yeah. in terms of making the case, you've got to keep it, you know, the kiss method. Yep. Mm. Point taken. So I, I, guess, I assume somebody's going to go see the Speaker's office too, or the Majority Leader's office. Do we have anybody appointed to do what, what do we have right now? We have set up the two chairs with the, the two chairs and the rankers and the ranking, uh, uh, the ranking uh, members of each each uh, legislative body. And what we did this year, uh, which is different in years past, uh, we kind of set up a robust agenda. And I and I will say I'm 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 happy that uh, I, I recognize that everyone is busy in the, in their own lives. But I think I believe we have six. Uh, commissioners uh, committed to, to attending the legislative day. It's, it's an important exercise. We have a robust agenda and we've moved it up in the legislative cycle to try to get it in before the, uh, the budget uh, talks are completed so that we're having it at a meaningful juncture as opposed to at the end of May uh, you know, uh, or the end of April, early May when they're kind of like ready to walk out the door. So I think this year we have a, a better shot at maybe getting some attention 
uh, you know, ahead of time. Uh, but certainly, uh, I, I believe uh, Ms. Consumanis has put together a robust agenda for us, and if there's any uh, other individuals that we would need to meet with, um, the, the speaker is... And the majority. Uh, and the majority yeah, leader is, uh, is a possibility. Certainly we can make that request. I, think, I really okay. think we should, and I know Commissioner uh, Perez is very close to Carl Hasty, and maybe other people here are close to the, to the majority leader. Well, I think you are. <laughs> In any event, I think that it's always helpful to bring somebody who's close to the legislator into, into the room. You know, usually we bring constituents into the room because nothing makes them more uh, aware of the importance of a piece of legislation and seeing somebody from their own constituency since we don't have anybody necessarily from the constituency. The, pet, the speaker or her, his chief of staff, the majority leader, and the chair always means usually stop by the lunch. Uh, but, you know, and we've made sure the invitations go out. In, in the past, the invitations went out to all members of the New York City delegation, as well as all the members of the election law committee for both houses. So uh, part of the process, again, as you know, it's Tuesday before the budget, you know, the, the budget cycle at the end. So the question of who you're going to get to see. And normally when we meet with the council, you get the council to the election mm -hmm. committees, you, you meet with the council. And, the, and they're sometimes because, as important as others to, in that. I, I, I understand that, that but uh, my experience is it's still three men in a room. And those are the people who really set the agenda. And those are the people who make the decisions. It's the, it's the three people. It's always helpful, yes, to see the other legislators because they need to be backed up. But in essence, that's where it comes from. Well, the, the, the past few times that I've gone out since I've been here, I've never seen Silver or Stillos. Not necessarily I, this okay, well, I've the individual, I'm saying. But the election chairs office. that we did sit with, like Cusick, he was a great help to us. Um, you know, I think it's very important that we meet with the election chairs. Oh, well, I'm not also, saying don't meet with them. I'm just saying that there's additional people. That's what I'm they will get the invitation. And we do follow up with phone calls. And, um, you know, we well, can try we, on we that. We can try. We can try. Okay. It's, it's just, that's, we should try. We should try. Yes. So, Miss Consumanis will make that outreach. And I'm getting better and better at pronouncing that name the more I pronounce it. Through. I guess I have to. I just think, I thought it was bad form to refer to as Miss K at the meeting. So I'm practicing. Are the, it could oh, be Coach K. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> so, so, can we get a. Can we get a, a vote on, uh, on on what we just discussed? And what what I think the vote would be on is to have the balance of the legislative uh, proposals remain the same. Eliminate 14-8. Right. Lead with the ballot proposal initiatives. Make that number one. Have uh, proposal number two be uh, the pay raise, and then leave the balance of that uh, case. And, and we'll vote on that, and that's how we'll package it up, and, and all the commissioners will get a copy of it. So move, Mr. Chair. Just, uh, just one before we vote. Sorry, but again, I it's apologize. Okay. I didn't have a chance to look at this. Is there anything else that we need to put into this, based on our rules that we've been employing, that have, that, that there have been any judicial decisions that we need to early voting and same day registration. Well, I think it's this slide. With respect to the court decision, Commissioner, the only bill that we had in there was dealing with the fax decision, which says cover sheets now can have mistakes and it doesn't matter anymore. We thought that was important to protect us. By doing, excuse me, by doing the ballot design that we have, uh, by not mentioning it, we preserve the ability not to do rotation. Right. But th th what we've done is what we try to do is incorporate into <coughs> the revolve. If all the changes we propose go with the 7106, then th that would be the effective statute giving us the ability to do everything from bold lines, shaded spaces, yeah, no, that's the well, that's and limit it that. Then we would, I think, be in a stronger case to say that's what the legislature intended to govern election day ballots. Okay. I just, uh, because it's. Because it, that's an important thing, and we're the only ones who know to point this out. So apparently there's nothing, so that's good. So now I have to get further say it more. <laughs> so everybody vote. So we have to make a motion. Mayor. Oh, he got a motion. So we'll Was it seconded? Second. Second. Second, all in favor? Aye. Can we clarify what we're voting? 
Sure. I'll, I'll go through it one more time. Yes. Eliminate or as many times as you need. <laughs> Thank you. Eliminate 14-8. Um, include uh, the poll worker pay raise. Lead with the ballot initiatives consolidating the six various proposals into, into one and make that item number one. Item number two will be the poll worker pay raise and then the rest of the uh, proposals will, their numbers will be adjusted accordingly once we make those removals and additions. And then that's it. And a friendly amendment for early day, mm. uh, same day registration and early voting. <laughs> Voted already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want that on the agenda for the next meeting. All right, so we're done with item C. I, I have to apologize to a gentleman in the audience, Mr. William Allen. Uh, we, he was brought down here today by Commissioner, come on up. He was brought down here by Commissioner uh, Shulkin. He's the, the new uh, Deputy uh, Chief Clerk in the borough of Manhattan, and I had told Mr. Allen, you can stay by the podium, I had told Mr. Allen that uh, I would call him first, uh, and I forgot. So, you're, you're here now, is uh, everyone, William Allen, Manhattan uh, Deputy Chief Clerk, uh, since March the 1st? March the 1st. March the 1st. All right, so newly minted. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I'm encouraged by the fact that it's uh, March what, 8th? 9, 10? And you're still here. So that's good. So hopefully that bodes well for your future. Thank you so much. All right, you're welcome. Okay. Uh, 2D, I'll turn this over to legal. You should do this one in your sleep. Yeah, uh, as you are aware, special elections have been proclaimed for May 5th. Um, we have received, as of today, three general objections, two of which relate to the certificates of nomination and uh, will be about the prima facie amount of objections. There's one pending a general objection that may or may not relate to an independent nominating petition. That spec has to be filed by midnight tonight if it does come in. In order to meet the data, ballot deadline to mail military ballots, we're asking that you schedule the hearings for early next week. Um, and I think the date is right. Tuesday, Wednesday. Is well, when, maybe Wednesday. Uh, what will happen is there will be prima facie matters, uh, as well as these related specs, relating only to the 43rd Assembly District. Uh, the Democratic Party candidate failed to submit a certificate of nomination. The Green Party candidate uh, did not submit a certificate of authorization. And then a little while ago, Mr. Owachu filed substitutions for a non-existent party that will have to be dealt with at the end as well. So, in the 11th Congressional. Could, could we do Tuesday? Because Tuesday is really our day. I know it's St. Patrick's Day, but probably the commissioners are not going to be hitting the bars until at least 3.30 or 4 o'clock. <laughs> so, uh, I, I, you know, I was assuming. I but I, before. just from a, I, I think we ought to try and do it. It's going to be a short meeting, but we got to get back to Tuesdays. I mean, I know from a personal matter, I sort of have blocked off Tuesday afternoons going for the last many years. And to start changing that, unless it's really an urgent thing, I think we could do it in an hour or two. Uh, we could be done, but I would ask that we try and keep it on Tuesday. Anybody else? Tuesday the 17th. Time. Same time? 1.30. We just have to get, we'll give notice to all the relevant parties and post it on the That's website. Right. The calendar said you would set a date at today's meeting and we would post it and tell people to call. So 1.30 next Tuesday? And I think we should have a meeting because the next Tuesday is when we're going up and we're not so we'll have a meeting, it's going to be the meeting, we're going to have a regular meeting and a hearing meeting. Do the hearings first? Yes, do the hearings first. Do the hearing first, and, and, then, and then because the following week, everybody's in Auburn. Right. Okay, everybody in favor? Okay. 
there's a no for golf today. Okay. Uh, how many do we, uh, for the, we're going to set it for the, uh, for the meeting, because we got to make sure, right, you got to have six. Quorum. Well, under the hearings, of course, under your rules, in the event sure. you don't have a full quorum, an equal number of commissioners who do assemble to, uh, from each side can okay. sit. But if you okay. do a reg regular business meeting, it. hopefully we'll have a quorum as well. And for the new commissioners, it, you know, you'll, the process you'll see, uh, it's, process. it's not too hard. And this won't be too long. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, there was only one cover sheet filed and one amended cover sheet as of right, and they happen to be in perfect order according to the cover sheet you speak to. There's only one independent nominating petition filed in the 43rd Assembly District. A general was filed. We don't know if a spec's going to be coming in. If we don't have it, then we'll be down to the prima facie matters relating to the 43rd and Mr. Awacha in the 11th Congression. Yes. <laughs> Is there anybody from a major party still around in, in the 43rd Assembly? District? Yes. The candidate, uh, the Republican Conservative candidate remains on the ballot. The Independence Party candidate remains on the ballot. The Working Families Party candidate remains on the ballot. The new parties have not nominated anyone. And depending on your actions on next Tuesday, the Green Party may be entitled to such. Okay. okay, so meeting next Tuesday on the 17th at 1 30. Okay, that item is resolved. Um, item E equipment deployment for. Uh, pardon? <laughs> you can have whatever you want. <laughs> 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 Deploying equipment on election day. Um, with respect, it is the uh, recommendation for this uh, special election that we increase the number of uh, voters per scanner from 1,400 to 2,800 while still having at least two scanners per site. Uh, the increase in the number of voters of, of per scanner will allow us to reduce the number of scanners that we have to deploy. Uh, given what the expected turnout, we think that that uh, deployment of uh, equipment would be sufficient uh, for that. And then also, we would like to increase the number of uh, voters per privacy booth from 300 uh, to 400, uh, where the total number of eligible voters is lower than 6,000 voters. If we, if we accomplish all of those uh, reductions while not sacrificing at all uh, the efficiency of the poll sites or the voter experience, that would result in just shy by our estimates of a $20,000 savings uh, in cost. I move that we make those changes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All again? Now, uh, that passes. Uh, the next one is there's been some issues uh, recently with respect to proposed ballot rotation legislation that seems to be getting some uh, legs. We've uh, I've circulated uh, the proposed assembly bill. It, it does not have a same as yet, and as far as we know, there is no uh, Senate sponsor of the bill just yet. However, uh, we thought that it was an important enough issue to bring uh, before the uh, Board of Commissioners to, to have a discussion. Um, I had been fully briefed on what some of the problems would be associated with that. Um, I could give an overview, but I both have uh, both Mr. Sadi here and Mr. Nordis here uh, to discuss uh, in detail uh, the technical uh, difficulties associated with, uh, with this implementation. So I'll, I'm happy enough uh, to go in any direction that the Commissioners want me to uh, go in that. Yeah, I'd like to hear from staff. Yeah, there you go. Uh -huh. <laughs> sure, there he is. Mr. Sally. Oh, you can't miss him. <laughs> 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 
Mr. Nasty, please make sure you keep the camera trained on Mr. Setti. If anybody needs the number of my tailor, it's on the welcome to it. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Commissioner. Uh, the, uh, the main problem that we'd have with uh, a legislative piece of legislation like this being passed is the um, purely the amount of styles differences the the amount of styles more than what 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 is present it would create using the 2013 uh, primary as an example we would go from I believe the number was 840 styles in total for the primary election to 4444 Eight, what was that? Eight, it was 841 to 4,444. Essentially, uh, what that creates is a separate ballot for each ED. And uh, a separate ballot configuration right. for each ED. In turn, what that causes is the staff to have to do a comprehensive test deck for each of those styles. So that is something. Can you clarify the term style. Sure. The style is a unique ballot configuration. It is the exact ballot how it appears with candidates' names in the same exact place. All of the all of the offices, everything matches. That's a that's a style because of rotation. <laughs> Uh, it, it would obviously the styles would uh, would increase dramatically, and the system, as it is currently structured, cannot handle can, cannot handle cre building the ballot in the way we do it now. So we would need to the board would need to go to a type of system in which it built its ballots by election district. That in and of itself would be very time consuming and probably need additional staff, although I'm not going to speak for John, <laughs> uh, and, 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 and a significant amount of time uh, also. And Commissioner Humane is also the universal symbol. <laughs> it, would, it, would also, it would also be a great cost. Staff, time, and the amount of ballots that we would need because I'm, I'm don't want to cut you off. Okay. I you're talking about four thousand four hundred and forty four unique ballots. That's right. Now Queens, I know about Queens mm -hmm. because unfortunately we have the most ballots. You are blessed. Different yeah, we are blessed. Than <laughs> And one of the biggest problems we had was because coming with a font size mm -hmm. that we could have it uniformed into the five boroughs. Right. So Queens technically like dictates that size. Right. Because, so if you have and you start rotating the ballots, now you could have that person's name there. So you're redesigning that the font size might not fit on when you're changing things around. Right. Well, I, I am not sure how much it would affect font size. What, what we realized after looking at it greater it would affect is if we were using the trilingual concept of printing, and maybe we're saying the same thing differently, but the, it, using the trilingual concept, it would further complicate the Queen's ballot. Right, because one of the problems we have is if, if, if it's bold, in a certain language, sure. it means something different, sure. so you had it. So. Sure. It, would, it it absolutely it would it would it would further complicate the Queen's ballot, and we're already in precarious right. and test decking to test all of them in Queens. We would have to start two and a half months before. <laughs> that, that's a that's a reasonable no, estimation. Not, I'm, 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 no, I mean it, it, it's not in time. Two and a half months, but Steve. But the part, right, September. September. And then you got a court petition. No, you don't have a petition. You don't have a ballot right. two and a half months. That's because what you, you don't you have a petition filing is the week after July 4th, which is just about 60 days, 70 days before the primary. So if you're saying you're going to take even longer than that, we'll start petitions on the street when you have to start <coughs> building the ballot. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
the only possible way to try and do this, it would seem to me, is that we gave up on uh, some of the testing and, and pre-testing. Um, when we were doing the last mayoral primary, some people at the state board recommended that we uh, reduce the level of testing that we would do from 400 or 450 ballots to 20 ballots. And we, as a board, rejected that because we didn't want there to be any possible chance of, of a problem. And when the initial rules and regulations were adopted, it was felt very strongly by some of the same people who were saying we could only do 20, that you needed to do 400 or 450 for each test deck because uh, you, you had var uh, variations and all sorts of things. So we rejected that because we were concerned that we wanted to make sure that, that what we were going to be using, even if it was shorter, smaller, whatever, was going to be right. And um, a way to try and accommodate this would be to shorten the testing and reduce the level of, and degree of testing that we would do. Everybody acknowledges that this is a tremendous pain in the neck just to do the testing. Sure. But if we're going to do it, let's do it the right way, what people thought would, would be required. And, um, and, and that's why I don't think that that would be a valuable uh, thing to give up on. And as uh, Commissioner Michelle is indicating, uh, in order to do it in Queens, we have to do it before the ballot is sent, before the candidates are known. And while uh, some people think that they know who's going to win <laughs> and who's going to get on the ballot before they get on the ballot, uh, we've always at least adopted a procedure to let's see what happens and what gets submitted to the board before we decide who's going to be on the ballot. Seems reasonable. So, uh, I, you know, the, the, the cost and the level of complexity and the chance of having to give up some of the uh, appropriate testing uh, parameters, it's just, it's, it's really not workable. And, uh, and in the days when we did do the rotation, we, uh, we had ballots, strips that were a lot less expensive and we didn't have the substantial testing requirements that we needed to do for them. It, 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 right, and also, right, right the, 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 just the, the, the equipment was entirely different where you could set up the back of the machine and wait and for would, the front of the machine. And, and, and it just it, it further supports the position that we've taken that there's separate machine rules and separate paper ballot rules. And what we've been following are the rules for paper ballots and not machine ballots. And while the paper ballots go into a machine, it's not really the same. And I would point out that it's only those um, elections within the city of New York that has rotation anyway. So the state board and the rest of the state still follows the machine rules, but they're not impacted by the rotation. It was only going to be us. And if people in Buffalo and Syracuse and Albany are able to vote for candidates without rotation, I think the people in the city of New York can also. So um, I personally am not in favor of the legislation, and I hope there isn't a Senate sponsor. Um, but that's my own personal Commissioner, um, I'm glad uh, my esteemed commissioner mentioned that, mentioned in the days when we did have rotation, because I've been voting for decades in New York City, and I can recall voting on ballots where the candidates' names were rotated. And I'm, wrong, I'm hearing an There's irony of, of but that was a, I was hearing an, an irony of uh, technological advance here. That in the old days, we were using ballot rotation, but in 2015, it, with all this advanced technology, it's now a headache. And it costs a lot, so we're not going to uh, we're not going to consider that. And I, I, that's just counterintuitive I to me. I understand. Um, is there a way that we could, uh, without violating election law, restrict the number 
of candidates or offices or party positions that we could consider for rotation? Or would this have to apply from a, for example, from a county committee office all the way on up to the top of the ballot? Yeah, it would, based on the draft bill, the bill submitted by Assemblyman Dinowitz, everything would be subject to it except county committee since they only appear in one ED. So there's no place to rotate them. But everybody else, from assembly district leader, judicial delegates, the slates, all, it's covered all the way up to the top of the ticket, be it governor, the mayor, all the way down. So does that 4,444 permutations would be include made. county committee or not no. include county It does include, yes. It does include. So if you take that out of the equation, county committee, what, what, what's the number like? It, 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 it always does. depends on the amount of uh, the amount of. I, I think I think, only one one eight, no. I, I think what if, if and what is current law? That's a legislative proposal, right? Assembly been dealing with. That's not law. Right? That's just an idea. Commissioner Fletcher, oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me stand corrected for one second here. It would not change the number of styles because this is on an ED basis and county committee is an, is an office that is by election district. This, basically, what we're saying is that there would be a separate permutation for every election district. So county committee being an election district, it, it would not change the amount of styles because, it's, because that office is... Only for a single election district. Correct. It's wholly contained Correct. within a single election district. The rotation only applies to, to offices that extend in multiple uh, election districts. So, what uh, is that current law? Current law provides that in the city of New York, the ballot on the voting machine used for casting a vote for primary elections has rotation. That's the point. This was written for the voting machine. The vote. We do. It is not applicable to paper ballots. But that law has not been yet. Has not no, yet been the current superseded. law. The current law, right? And what Mr. Assemblyman and did. And we are rotating candidates' names now. Right? No, no, no. no. We, we, Assemblyman no, Dillard wants to take out the words "voting machine." Right. He the, wants the, to make it to all ballots. The, what it is is that years ago you had the the machine that pulled down. It was very easy to test that without the slip, and then you would just put a slip in, the next machine you would rotate that slip. But the testing on that machine was all done because it was pulling yeah. and mechanical. When did New York, so now, the New York City now, Board of Elections eliminate candidate rotation? Well, when the machine. 2010. 2010. 2010. Actually, in 2011, we, we did have rotation, and we, couldn't get and we, and we only we were able to get machines out about half the number that we really did because we didn't realize how long it would take to do the testing. And ever since then, we read the law the way a practical person would read it to say that we should follow the paper ballot rules. The new machines came in in 2010. We tried to do the rotation in 2010, and we were not able to test enough. We, we barely made enough machines we got it out in the field, but we were about a third to 40 percent below what we should have been. But we carried off the election anyway, and everybody was taken by surprise the, the amount of time it took to do the testing. So that was the one time after the new machines, because they were introduced in 2010, and it was a nightmare for the board to try and do it, and we weren't able to get the machine enough, as many machines as we were supposed to get out, out. Uh, and as a result, it was something we took a look at. We read the law, and the law seems pretty clear about the rules regarding paper ballots. Right. This legislation is seeking, and it doesn't even do the job properly, because it just takes the machine ballot rules, takes out the word machine ballot, so there's still a uh, ambiguity between the two sections. One that does, that used to refer, if it was enacted, that used to refer to machines, and there's still the separate rules for paper ballots. So one could argue that that because of the ambiguity, we still wouldn't have to rotate. But but Assemblyman Dinowitz perhaps didn't fully think it through because he would have to also to make it consistent change the other sections that deal with paper ballots to make it clear that you would have to rotate on paper ballots too. So this bill has some technical deficiencies or significant technical deficiencies, um, whether or not we want to do it. It was just 
a real nightmare for us to have to try and, and fly with them. But at this time, we do not rotate no. candidates. We have not since 2010. Mm -hmm. But I, I would just like to inject a little law into this uh, uh, conversation since I think the law is, is, is what ultimately is our guidepost. <coughs> Section 7-104 of the election law specifically refers to ballots form of voting machine. Now that is clearly from the intent of the statute to be <coughs> the lever machines. That was amended to some extent in July 7th of 2010. There is a separate section that deals with 7-106 that deals with election day paper ballots form up, <coughs> which are the ballots that we use when we use the DS-200s. That was also had some amendments that were effective July 7th, 2010. Now, if the state legislature intended to merge or in some way uh, marry these two statutes or to come up with one single statute that dealt with both the lever machines and the paper ballots, they in fact didn't do that when they had the opportunity to do it on July 7, 2010. Push forward to section 7-116, which deals with the order of the names on the ballot. The language of that statute refers to voting machines and does not mention paper ballots. So because of that split between these two, uh, you know, arguably competing statutes, and then this separate statute that deals with ballot rotation, if it was the legislator's intent to have the rotation apply to the paper ballots, uh, which are referred uh, to in 7-106, election day paper ballots, that amendment should have been made somewhere in and around the time of Je uh, July 7, 2010 to get this to all work together. It doesn't all work together, <coughs> and because it's not a creative interpretation of the law that we're saying we're not doing rotation, what we're simply saying is the current state of the law does not require us to do rotation because it doesn't refer to election day paper ballots. That's been the way it was explained to me and when the I was New York State Board of Elections tacitly agrees with it. No. 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 Their view is that they should yeah. that their view is that we should take it upon ourselves to quote unquote you re you ready for a word? I'm listening. Harmonize. Now I, you know, grew um. up a little bit past <laughs> the two op era, but I'm old, I'm old enough to remember it. Uh, I don't know that we should all be harmonizing. I mean, I, I think that this is something, at least from one lawyer's opinion, and I, I certainly am not the be all and end all of anything, but one lawyer's opinion says to me that this legislature should say what it means and give us clear direction with respect to the rules that we need to follow. But what, I, what I'm saying is the law, whatever the law is, I watched and I was in, heavily involved in redesigning this uh, ballot last time and the enormous work that went involved just for Queens alone, you wouldn't believe one borough and the, the amount of time went in to try to get it that Staten Island had, uh, they could read it and have half of their ballot empty. And that, they, they, I'm just thinking of trying to do it now and for every ED that has the five languages, there's three different ballots. Now you're going to have nine ballots, nine packages, because they all have to rotate. Maybe each ED. Yeah, but, each ED. But, 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 Commissioner, you hit on the head. Right now, by Paul side, if you had equivalent stuff, you would be testing only three sets of ballots. And then I now have, have five EDs, you're testing 15 sets of ballots. And I, I was at the, the, the VMF when they would test back right. because I wanted to learn and I was watching them. And I'm, I thought it was kind of crazy that you had to do a deck like this and you had to pull them all out and, then, and test them and test them. We actually had to ask for an extra machine, John, right? Yeah. And then another scanner and everything because we couldn't finish it just on this system that we have. Maybe if members of the legislature are educated on the deficiencies of this bill um, and will yeah. kind of foresee a doomsday scenario like they did when we begged to bring the lever machines back, 
for the citywide primary. Uh, nobody wants the unthinkable to happen and not have the time to get machines ready. You know, so hopefully, maybe even when we go up, uh, I think we're, weeks, we're, we'll make our point. <laughs> we're better off leaving this alone because the ambiguity serves our purpose. We put. It occurred to me to do something about this with that. That's why <laughs> I didn't say to you. Long as they're there for the this council is not standing outside our door, huh? ready to call us out of here. No, no. no. being in violation of the state. Leave it alone and let whatever the state board requires. Because right, so I think we're consistent with right. state law. Yes. Even though it's inconsistent. I'm done. Okay. <laughs> no, no. With, with our position is we follow the state law. Okay. Well, like I said, the only reason that we brought it to the attention was that if if the statute gets uh, is passed uh, in the way that uh, one assemblyman is proposing that it is, and if you can get some of his closest friends to, to change it, and 7 116 is in fact amended. The impact would be onerous uh, on on the, the city board of elections, and we already have one court decision, the, the Schmidt decision, that that already stands for the proposition that it gets past the point where challenges in court even make a difference, because there's always going to be that drop dead moment where we can't finish the process, and, and so. This would certainly put us in a position where we couldn't uh, finish the process from between a September primary, certainly, and a, and a November term. Right, and if we make an error on one, I'm sorry, if you make an error on one ballot and the other, there's a court challenge. It would be worth trying to do challenges for you. That's that's what the right said. So they're going to try to reach out and explaining it, you know, and I think it, you know, without taking a position on it, I personally know what happens to Queens. So I, I know. Well, it's not just Queens. I mean, in 2010. Well, it's all the boroughs. Yeah, in 2010, they were still rolling machines out at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, right. To get them to the, to, the, to the poll sites. And we didn't have, I mean, thank God the commissioner's ruled to have a minimum of two in every site. And we met, you know, that our statutory it. requirement. But we didn't get all the machines out because of the, the testing yeah. that was involved. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I'm, I'm just using Queens yeah. because I know it, and I know the, the, the Queens has the most, and Staten Island has the least. So we used the two boroughs that time to try to compare it and try to get uh, a decent ballot for everybody. So are we going to follow up with that suggestion that somebody reach out to somebody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to follow up. Commissioner, Commissioner, referred to election law, you're going to be meeting with the chair of the committee. Uh, that's the appropriate time yeah. to speak. Assembly Medinowitz on the election law? He is a member. He is, yeah. he is a member. Yeah. But Chair Cusick is the one who sets the agenda. Any other questions on this? Okay, any, anything else? That's it. To executive, uh, executive no. session? Be, before we go Anybody into executive public? session, I want to clarify, uh, because it didn't make it into the minutes. Oh, shh. When we came out of executive session two weeks ago, I uh, did not put into the record that the commissioners, in fact, voted to approve the memorandum of agreement for the union contract. Uh, although that did happen in executive session, it was by a uh, unanimous vote of all commissioners in attendance at the time. And it, it in fact, has been signed uh, by President Michel in his capacity and returned. But it just didn't make it through. I forgot if there was a committee meet, report, uh, outreach, uh, outreach committee report. Very briefly, uh, uh, Commissioner Rendino, Commissioner Shalhoun, Commissioner Shulkin, and myself. Uh, we met on Tuesday. Uh, we were asking Ms. Vasquez to circulate a, uh, on a proposed uh, outreach device uh, that would house voter registration forms as required by law in different language and where required by law, such as Queens, as part of a pilot uh, outreach effort. We also had at our meeting um, uh, the campaign finance board staff who, who briefed us on some of their outreach efforts and indicated that our executive director and our public affairs director are part of the overall outreach uh, Interagency committee that they have. Uh, we talked about uh, 
try to collaborate more going forward, sharing resources, commissioners, you may have any other brief updates on Just that some of the dialogue that was had during the meeting was the outreach should also, you know, really be focused on the 4 million voters, 4.2 million voters we have on the rolls and kind of addressing some of the concerns they had leading up to election day, getting information. And so <coughs> we have a lot of work to do in that regard. We might have some ideas on how to reach out to voters so that uh, when they want to exer exercise the right to vote on election day, they know where to go, uh, and that it's an easy and painful process. Yeah, I just want to thank some of the civic groups that attended and gave us a lot of good ideas, too. So thank you for your good ideas. And if you have any more, we'll have to hear them. Thank you. Uh, going into executive session, uh, next, if, for personnel, right. The next Tuesday, 1.30 is uh, hearing. And a hearing. Hearing and then the meeting. Thank you for everybody coming. Yes, uh, the following actions uh, were taken in executive session by uh, unanimous vote of all commissioners in attendance. In the borough of Manhattan, Charlotte uh, Jordan will get a 140 hour discretionary advance of time retroactive to January 20th, uh, 2015. Uh, so Tisha Thompson, where is Commissioner Shokin? Right here, sir. Do you have that list for me? I will, in a minute. Okay, so I'll move on. Uh, we also have, uh, in the borough of Queens, uh, Philip Mion is transferred uh, from the general office to the Queens borough office, and Guy Agnabeni is transferred from the Queens borough office to the uh, general office. There with respect to uh, the Rosh Hashanah conflict, I advise the commissioners that we, we will be advising uh, the uh, state legislature, uh, reminding them that Rosh Hashanah conflicts with the September primary, because it's on September the 15th, which coincides with Rosh Hashanah. So we will remind them, typically in the past, they've uh, moved the date to accommodate that, uh, but that will be a legislative uh, decision. Uh, with respect to the conflicts of interest, uh, we have authorization to uh, promulgate and uh, submit the list uh, to the uh, conflicts of interest board of those employees and or commissioners that are required to, uh, to report out uh, their conflicts of interest. In addition, uh, I will be uh, drafting a cover letter which adequately protects the, uh, the uh, positions of the board. Uh, and and the, all of the commissioners will be copied on that. No, it's the effective date. Uh, we have uh, other personnel actions. Uh, with Tisha, uh, Tisha Thompson in Manhattan uh, will be receiving an advance of uh, sick leave uh, retroactive to February 13, 2015. Uh, Rennie Hill will receive a uh, discretionary advance of time uh, in the amount of uh, 140 hours. Uh, Reggie Stark, is that the correct name? Correct. Uh, will receive a discretionary advance of time uh, in the amount of 70 hours. Uh, we have a vacancy in the EBS unit uh, for which we advertised in the New York Times and on Monster.com and received numerous resumes. Interviews were conducted by uh, uh, John Nordis, who's in charge of our EVS division. It was narrowed down to two candidates uh, who were then interviewed by executive management consisting of myself and Ms. Sandow, and we made a recommendation today uh, to uh, hire uh, effective immediately, but subject to uh, Mr. Uh, Pilyovsky's uh, current employment and, and his departure date therefrom. Alexander Pilyovsky, who uh, will be uh, in the position of system administrator slash program analyst at a salary of $84,020 annually. And that concludes 
our uh, commissioners' meeting for today. Thank you. All right.